capitalism that turns uh, old world or old form currencies into human capital. So now human data is the new capital. So it's still capitalism, but there will be, and there already are, uh, socialist elements as well as uh, communist elements, right? All kind of mixed together. It's, and the, the things are always, a, it's always a mixed economy. I, I don't think there's any pure economy that exists. Um, so eat the poor. It's funny because they're creating this culture now that aims to eat the rich. And what I've discovered is that a lot, there's this movement that really blew up in 2022. And it has to do with a lot of the films that were coming out. And I'm going to show you some, but I want to start off with one that came out in 2020. It's this eerie take on Eat the Rich that I say is actually, there's a subtext to it. There's like an esoteric part of it that says, no, Eat the Rich is the surface uh, uh, rouge, ruse that is that aims to, in a sense, deflect from what's really going on, which is Eat the Poor. So I want to show you some films that came out and we're going to go back and show, look at some older films and we're going to see how this actually transpired. But first I want to show you a trailer from a film in tw that came out in 2020 it called The Hunt. Okay, The Hunt. about a glass of champagne. Perfect. Huh. What I'm losing some weight. Hey. Put him in the back with the rest. Point and shoot. Everybody get down! I know what this is. It's Mannergate. Every year, these rich elites kidnap a bunch of normal folks like us. Where'd they get you from? Wyoming. Orlando. Mississippi. This is a real thing. You're hunting human beings for sport. Then you're not human beings. Help you? What state is this? Most people know where they are. All right, most people. You're in the glorious state of Arkansas, sweetheart. Is there anything else I can help? Oh! How'd you know she was lying? Because everyone is lying. This is a wild game of survival. There has to be a reason they chose us. I'm not going down with that fight. War is war. You have no idea what you're up against. <laughs> this time, they picked the wrong woman. Game of survival. They're gonna rip you to pieces. We'll see. Well, I must say it wasn't that bad of a film. And that lead the girl was she was pretty pretty good i i i did pay attention to the clear kind of feminist angle this badass chick whooping everybody but it was very entertaining and she really she really played that role well and she was bad man she really was but but it was what and spoiler alert here you know what was interesting was at the end uh swank hillary swank i think she was just like oh this because basically it's like rich people play this game hunting people of quote unquote lower class and at the end she's like uh she's like no see you conspiracy theorists because every single person that were they were hunting in the game were like uh podcasters and like internet conspiracy theorists it was really almost like kind of creepy watching it because they purposely sought out conspiracy theorists from the internet 
and called them to play this game and they hunted them crazy and by the end of the game swank is the leader she's like look you guys did this she said you guys did this you guys kept talking about how we are doing this thing and we weren't we weren't doing this thing but since you guys made such a big deal we decided to do this thing it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy it, it, that little twist pissed me off but i liked it at the same time because i was like damn clever and it's saying something deeper it's almost a message predictive programming mysterious one uh-huh yes that's an aspect of it one i don't want to really think about but yes you're right but also it's it's almost sending a message right and it was a little creepy and also the way they made it a comedy right it wasn't necessarily serious it was comedic now what's the the bigger issue and the reason i'm showing you this not just the whole conspiracy angle which was probably the most fascinating but it fits into a bigger picture and the bigger picture has to do with this narrative that i see everywhere right now and it's something about 2022 that really pushed this narrative and the timing of it all just makes too much sense especially right after this early 2023 davos meeting thinking about the 2025 digitization um, initiatives they have and this whole push toward this new type of Gaian communitarianism that wants to say you know what us rich people are better we're no longer evil and it's almost like if we pay attention to social engineering especially if we pay attention to um, propaganda put in Hollywood films and just art in general it would make plenty of sense that would that they would create some type of narrative that aims to in, in a sense condition the populations to hate and despise the elite and the wealthy possibly there is this feigned attempt or this attempt to uh to make it look as if rich people elitists are inherently bad and we need to do away with them so there's this like building up of hatred towards them and in that film there were so there was so much stereotypes uh, and uh propaganda you know the whole uh you know white supremacy uh white patriarchy capitalists all of those like social justice warrior things was just throughout the film but it goes further i want to go back actually i want to go back to the 90s and i just want to show you that this idea has always been around and i want to give you examples cultural examples of this as evidence this idea has always been around but i think it's purposely being exploited now for culture creation for cultural transition into this new economy into this new this new world this new era this new normal right and one of the ways they're going to get us okay with monotony minimalism uh mediocrity and uh owning nothing and being happy the way they get us okay with this is by giving us films that show how bad and evil rich people are but also how heroic uh the average or lower class are Why would you want to kill yourself? Maybe I like the idea of choosing when I die instead of having somebody else choose for me. If someone offered you a good job, would you be interested? What kind of job are you talking about? We need someone to help us with our hunts out in the wilderness. Are you sure about this one? Oh, I'm sure. Has he got courage? Gentlemen, I would like you to meet our new hunting guide, Mason. Here's a toast to the hunters and a prayer for the hunted. <laughs> <laughs> the hunt begins Get it. Let's get it. Just let me get the door for you. Go, go, go. We're not really gonna hunt him, are we? He's nothing. He's less than nothing. Come on, Mason! Don't take any part in this. I want you! Thank you. Thank you. If you make it to civilization, you live. Thank If you don't, ah! maybe God will have mercy. Oh! Yeah! I think he's gone back to the cabin. None of them. Has ever done that before. Mr. Mason. Mason. 
sense that smell. Everybody out of the cabin! I like my meat rare. Trump, well done, bitch. Jack Mason knows he's going to die someday. Damn, I wish I'd never start smoking. But today, he's not in the mood. This is where it gets interesting. Never underestimate. Come on, Mason! A man who has nothing to lose. Rutger Hauer, Charles Dutton, Gary Busey, F. Murray Abraham, William McNamara, and Ice T. Surviving the game. Now, there's some deep messages in there. A man that has nothing to lose. Think about the think about that. Nothing to lose. I see a similar message being given to us plebs right now. We have nothing to lose and all to gain. Right. Now, there's another film that's similar that I won't show a uh, trailer of because it's just a bit crazy. But I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, Hostel. Okay. So this is another one of these films. Well, I know this happens, right? But I think this all has been programming us to accept this type of reality. And then, of course, there's the recent Squid Games, which is the same narrative. Wealthy people hunting. Hunting either be the poor or people that have some type of um, uh, sketchy past, checkered past, like in, in the Squid Games, right? Now I want to show you this one here. This is Triangle of Sadness. So now we're getting to 2022. So it's interesting how there's been several movies that came out in 2022 that are all along these lines. And they were very popular films too. Got a lot of uh, rave reviews. And I study culture. I study Hollywood and films uh, as, a, as a part of this work. And I've always noticed how they use narratives to create culture and to shift uh, the overall thinking of the populations and to create these types of like zeitgeists, right? And I think they are actually creating or attempting, attempting to create this communitarian zeitgeist of sorts that brings us all together under the guise of empathy and altruism, right? Uh, taking it, sticking it to the man, um, finally getting back at the white man or the patriarch or the capitalist, this ongoing message and narrative. But I, I couldn't help but notice how massive it was in 2022 specifically because several of these films all came out at the same time and there's just this ongoing narrative. So Triangle of Sadness is another one. These rich people get on this cruise ship and basically the cruise ship crashes and they're stuck on an island and they just kill each other off basically so we don't have any sails it will save yes well then in that case we will clean the sails yes of course yes to love. To love. A Russian capitalist <laughs> and an American <laughs> communist. On a $250 million luxury yacht. Is going under. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just now. But for everyone. This is really bad. This is really, really bad. So this one I thought was uh, another one of these major messages that 
it's almost uh, like, what is it, Schattenfreuden, I think is, I, I'm, forgive me if I butchered that, guys, I, I can't speak German, um, Schattenfreuden <laughs> is where you get joy out of seeing other people's pain, okay? Now, I deeply believe this is happening in a lot of the films right now, especially with regard to the wealthy, the rich, the white, the patriarchal, the capitalistic, uh, all of those those concepts uh, people, these, these, these films are being brought out and, and put before our eyes so we could get joy out of, out of this death, out of this pain, because we, as people of, of the lower class, the plebs, we have pain. We have those of us that might've grown up in impoverished situations or have families that are poor and, you know, have always struggled in life. And to see all these wealthy people just having it so easy, of course, there is this kind of resentment that can build up, especially in those that might be immature, right? Or, or those that might just not really have the, a, a type of uh, control over these feelings. Self-deprecation is another one, Gabriel. Yes. And, and so I'm noticing this and it's really, it's crazy because this is spiritual. This it's, it's psychological, of course, but it's at its depth, at its d deepest part, this is spiritual. This is building up a type of dark spirit of, of hatred and resentment, almost in a sense to, to create armies of communitarian warriors that want to slit the throats of the slave master if you will. It's almost like this Nat Turner campaign through film and art. Fascinating to me. Uh, so Triangle of Sadness was one that came out in 2022. Another one is The Invitation. Now, The Invitation, 2022, a bit different, has a what appears to be like a mixed race um, um, lead. Some of you might be familiar with her from... Um, Game of Thrones, I believe. This is another one of these stories, but it's different. It's almost like an Obama tale because, you know, Obama, he's bloodline, you know. So apparently this girl, um, she, she discovers that she's part of this very wealthy family and she gets invited to this party. And essentially it's kind of like an eyes wide shut kind of thing. She takes a DNA test. Again, DNA is involved. Everything's genomic all throughout a lot of the things we're watching. She discovers she's, she's part of this wealthy family and she gets invited to this party. And long story short, I mean, they show the whole movie in, in the trailer. It's one of those type of trailers. Uh, she discovers that she's part of this family, but this, they're like, uh, it's like a Rothschild's party, you know, they're just like, you know, freaky deaky, you know, uh, doing all types of stuff and not just, um, well, murder, you know, full on. But just watching this trailer alone, you you get what it's about. And it fits perfectly into my theory. And it fits perfectly into this whole idea of communitarianism uh, transitioning into a, a type of post-capitalistic era where wealthy people, rich billionaires, oligarchic aristocracy is of the old world and no longer exists. And now we're in this new era, this new stage of collectivism where everyone is equal and happy um, with nothing and you know we, we we are satisfied with with the mediocre and the mild um, and and there's no more this this aristoc aristocratic culture no longer exists at least visually because see now everything's digital everything's happening behind uh, networks and 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 um, be behind databases and everything. We have no idea who's controlling what anymore. It's it's almost as if they're trying to shift this whole the paradigm is is shifting such that we no longer can point at the wealth because wealth will be acquired in a new way. It will be presented and and uh, viewable in a different way, or maybe just it, it will be invisible, right? Because it's this new type of virtual, abstract, digital culture and world where you can't see who's pulling the strings, um, especially when AI is controlling most things. You won't have a human being, a rich, wealthy white man to point at anymore. Um, what are you going to do? Point at the, you know, Eurasian or, or Asian uh, programmer, you know, European programmer that's just 
programming the AI and doesn't really own anything, who are you going to point at? Who, who are you going to point out as the bad guy? Do you see what I mean? Really interesting. But it goes further. There's another one. It's called The Menu. Same narrative, same year. This one, it's similar to the triangle of sadness in that they go on this like ship. But again, rich people go on a ship and they they end up getting, uh, I don't know if it's murder. It's it's along this, these similar lines. It's just the same narrative done with different actors, kind of a different script. But it's this, they're making it very clear. Hate anybody with money, especially anybody that supports the white supremacist, patriarchal, capitalistic boogeyman. Right. This apparently this one's supposed to be really good. But regardless of the art, I I definitely know all of these films are by design being put out to promote some of these Davos agendas, right? So it's not just Davos, it's not just World Economic Forum. It's it's subliminal. It's it's in the it's in the culture, it's in the media, it's in the art. It's it's these zeitgeists that are just flowing around and entering our senses and subconsciously literally programming how we feel about things. At least the general population, not not us per se. What they seem to be doing is turning the social hierarchy on its head. That's what these films are actually doing. They aim to turn the social hierarchy on its head, collapsing the dynamic between power and beauty. Yeah, like models, right? So what you see in the triangle is like uh, catwalk, high fashion models and, and, and rich people. So it's like beauty and power. And I just, I find this fascinating because these are precisely the things that the culture creators today through media have been trying to destroy. They've been trying to destroy the concept of objective or standards of beauty. Um, regardless of how anyone feels, there has to be order, hierarchy, you know. There, these things have to exist to degrees, like, like just the concept of aesthetics. So it's interesting how they're taking things like beauty and power and trying to destroy them. And that's precisely what this film here is, is doing. Um, and we see all of that through a lot of the like postmodern social justice stuff. It's just, it's really interesting. So it's like collapsing the dynamic between power and beauty. So for me, it's as if they're trying to destroy the traditional forms of culture and worldviews that adhere to things like order and hierarchy and aesthetic standards. Uh, they're, they're trying to deconstruct these things through film in a very subliminal, almost indirect way. But when you line up all these films side by side, you realize like this is direct. <laughs> this is a direct attack on these things. And this isn't to say that I, I agree with how these things are utilized and exploited in the real. Um, but I do understand that they are trying to deconstruct them because they're trying to wage war on all things true, pure, and good uh, with, with in pursuit of this new normal, this new communitarian Gaian kind of new age pagan technocracy, right? So um, on top of that, me and, oh, to add to that, there's also the Velma. Thing, which all the conservatives are talking about right now. And I think that's part of the PSYOP too. They want everyone to get all pissed off about it. Um, but it's playing into the role too because it it's totally feeding into this whole thing. But uh, it's interesting how all of these films are coming out at once as a like a programming agenda, billionaireism, in that it's it's a it's a it's a figment of of our imaginations. There billionaires don't exist just like trillionaires don't exist these amounts of money um aren't necessarily real or, or can be accounted for or actually be materialized and we did a show talking about this and i think that's another aspect of what we're seeing so all of these this is how culture creation works through propaganda it's multi-layered and multi-pronged it's in the movies it's in the real lives or <laughs> Uh, pseudo lives of these celebrities um it's in the in the news right it's in the politics so it's what i call a blanket themed campaign where it's just throwing this blanket of of propaganda over all facets 
of, of, of attention. Billionaireism, okay? Billionaireism. This false concept of billionaireism. So isn't it interesting? Right now we're seeing all these movies that are coming out at the same time, tandem. Death killing, murdering rich, wealthy people, or making fun of wealthy people. Um, wealthy people, white patriarchal. We haven't seen any Christian stuff yet. Uh, there was that Maid's Tale, of course, but I'm sure there's, you know, I don't know all the films. Um, there's tons of films. There's tons of movies. I'm sure you guys know all kinds of that I'm, I'm not mentioning. But these movies are part of a massive developing zeitgeist, like an egregore of sorts that is going to literally create a new type of spirit, right? Like this communitarianism where we all come together under our position as plebs against the big, bad, rich, wealthy patriarchy. But at the same time, is it, isn't it interesting how this whole idea of billionaireism is disappearing? For instance, check this out. Paris Hilton says she no longer wants to be a billionaire. I'm more interested in babies. Right. This is speaking to this concept of billionaireism in that billion billionaireism isn't real. It's just this kind of fake show. So we worship these people that we look at as like prestigious and wealthy and just powerful. Bill Gates intends to stop being one of the world's richest people. The billionaire made a $20 billion donation that will kick him off the list taking themselves the rich wealthy elite that are being killed and murdered in these films are now in the real taking themselves off the list of billionaireism it goes on bill gates no longer wants to be a billionaire these are his reasons kylie jenner is reportedly no longer a billionaire and forbes says she likely showed it fake tax she sh showed it fake tax returns it's clear that kylie's camp has been lying or there's no such thing to begin with. It's all, it's all an illusion. It's, it's, it's magic. Think about it. If these people weren't as rich as we believe they are, do you think we would follow them the way we do? Do you think we would worship them the way they do? It's more than just the fame. It's, it's just the, the thought of them having so much freedom financially that they can do whatever they want. We see all these beautiful images of them traveling the world, their big planes, their fashion, their clothes, their women. Think about this, guys. Kanye West, no longer a billionaire after Adidas cuts ties. Sam Bankman Fried, no longer a billionaire after 14.6 billion wipeout Bloomberg. All at the same time. The world's richest people lost two trillion last year, according to reports. This is this is this is major. This is major. Why 2022? Two trillion last year. The world's richest people. Possibly because we are transitioning. And they're trying to appear just moral. Feigned conscientiousness. Hmm. Continues. Mark Zuckerberg lost 100 billion in the last 13 months. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, fiat. Exactly, Adam Bomb. Exactly. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Fake, artificial, artificial intelligence, virtuality, everything, guys, abstract, immaterial, not there. Post-reality, false reality, ontological warfare. Is it all making sense to you now? We are having a cartoon of animated proportions built around us. We are... Some might even say literally in Plato's cave. Induced disease, death, pain. But I'll even add to that uh, cultural aspects of this, social aspects of this, as Illich has stated. But I'll go further and say mediated aspects of this. Because see, the media and technology we have now, he wasn't aware of when he was writing those works. 
with his work as shoulders to stand on, um, being one that's living in this now super modern era, I can take some of these ideas and recognize them in, from different perspectives in that we have new perspectives to be had like screens, smart tech, etc. I'm now seeing a type of mediated iatrogenesis in that now technology is creating disease. Technology is creating death. And not just through, say, radiation, electromagnetic field manipulation, et cetera. Not, not, that's, that's there, right? But I'm speaking more to, to a, a type of attentional disease in that we change based on what we see, based on what we consume. Remember, um, attentional weight uh, we talked about last show. There, through technology, this mediated techno, this mediated experience, what's happening is, and especially with propaganda, they're lowering our standard of health. Well, what do I mean by that? Lowering our standard of health. Think about the terms very, very common um, standard of living, quality of life. You're all familiar with those. Quality of life, standard of living. They're changing our quality of health and our standard of health. And they're accomplishing this through, through propaganda, through psyops like the scamdemic, for instance. And it, what I'm seeing is this move towards getting us comfortable with, with lo low quality health or general or chronic illnesses or chronic disease for instance this whole long convid thing which in my view is just ad adverse events as a response to this just constant technology being put in people's bodies they they deflect and call this thing long convid this is an example of what i mean everyone is just okay and lockdowns definitely assisted in that vl thank you for mentioning that man thank you for that yeah, that's very important I, sh I should have mentioned that. Yeah. Lockdowns were a big part of this too. The quarantine, um, masking, for instance, all the bad things that happened um, to children. Uh, speech therapists are, are just making tons of money now, uh, getting a lot of work, unfortunately. I mean, it's like a bittersweet thing. It's good that they're getting work, but you, you get the point. Um, yeah. Rare diseases, sudden deaths, all of this stuff. Um, quarantine, lockdowns for sure. Uh, separating, right? This distancing, social distancing, and, and just the fear, right? The this new standard part of our culture where most people, generally speaking, are just kind of a little afraid of each other. You know, they want to stay away. This Thanatos, we're, we're going to Thanatos. Death instinct. The Freudian concept of Thanatos. We're, we're being culturally, systemically engineered, not just to accept a lower grade quality of health in general, but also we're almost taking on and experiencing a drive towards death a death instinct is in a sense i don't want to say tapped because i don't believe i don't i don't adhere to mo the majority of freudian's concepts i, th I think they're extremely flawed he, he had some good additions to psychological concepts but i'm not saying there is this actual death instinct opposed to the eros right I like his dichotomy of Eros and Thanatos, death and sex. We're going there. We're going there. They're very real components, I believe, of the flesh. He's just misdefined them and he doesn't have the worldview and foundation to really understand these concepts because he's strictly coming from, a, you know, like a bioengineering, materialist, Darwinian perspective. He was more of a biologist than a psychologist, honestly. But it, it's like this engineered death instinct. And I think it's being not tapped in a, in a real sense, but almost conjured in a spiritual sense through the constant inundation of death imagery, death symbolism, in the movies, in the news, in the politics. Right? And we're seeing real death as well, not just simulated death, like what we talked about in all of the serial killer stuff, Dahmer, et cetera. We're not just seeing simulated death. We're seeing real death in popular culture, say with all the, all the rappers that are being murdered constantly, especially recently, as well as uh, the real death we're seeing in the suddenly died phenomena right now. 
So if you think about it, death has been presented to us in a way that has never existed because we now have this new amplification model or mechanism uh, that we call smart technology or screens. Now that we all have these screens, we're able to see things in a higher volume, more consistently, more regularly, right? These organizations, these forms of propaganda have access to our minds and spirit on a daily basis, all throughout the day, for those of us that are constantly checking these things. This is a way to conjure, invoke spiritual demons and, and, and dark spirits. And, and I think this concept, I think it's a spiritual thing. I, I don't think it's like biological, like Freud tries to explain. I, I think this idea of Thanatos is, is it's, not, it's not a death drive. It's almost like a, death, a, de a demonic death spirit. And I'm sure one of you would actually be able to come up with the demon, you know, the, the actual uh, one of the 72, you know, of the Goetia. I'm sure someone knows you know, like a death, a, a demon that brings death. There's, you know, even in Greek myths, well, Thanatos comes from the Greek myths, but. So let's talk about this. So, so all of that kind of leads, or at least ends in the ultimate movement that we're seeing here, the spiritual, the spiritual movement that is literally selling us death in all types of forms and symbols, whether it's in popular culture through music, videos, I, um, personalities. I think a big death bringing example right now would be, say, the blue face Christian relationship, you know, the psychopath, sociopath, and the, the borderline relationship where they're both seeking death through each other and it's being promoted and praised. A lot of people are talking against it, of course, but it's like one of the biggest things in, in that area of pop culture. This is just an example. I think we see a lot of that also in, in other areas. So check this out. Uh, let me pull this one. Yeah, there we go. Greek mythology. Thanatos in ancient Greek religion and mythology, the personification of death. I, I, I believe we're seeing death personified every day. Culturally, politically. Um, if you notice, man, if, if you guys are paying attention to even some of the mainstream political stuff, there's always like this underlying death narrative or potential for death. Fear of death, possible death, stopping deaths, bare life, again, back to Agamben, right? This preoccupation with living and not dying, but not living to begin with and detached from the, transcend the transcendence of, of living and holding on to and relying on living like in this contingent relationship with the, the bare life minimum of biological processes, material, blood, veins, you know, uh, washing hands and everything is physical. Yet we're learning about all of this through a virtual medium. You, you, see, you see how crazy that is? We're not really experiencing a lot of this in the real. It's really affecting us though. Yet we're experiencing it virtually. Crazy, I know. Let me continue. The personification of death. Let's go into Freud's concept. Thanatos. This is at study.com. Thanatos is Freud's death instinct. Death drive definition and meaning. What is, what is the death instinct? The death instinct, according to Sigmund Freud, is the human tendency to destructive, risky, or otherwise negative behavior. Can you say 2023 culture? Go on TikTok. Look at all the trends. People are seeking death, whether that's through like, you know, uh, exhibitionism. You got guys, some guy almost got shot trying to do a YouTube video, a prank. He almost got shot. Another guy got like choked out in an airport pretending to steal someone's bag to do a YouTube prank. Almost, you know, got himself choked out. Um, just this exhibitionism. Or the hypersexuality of a lot of these, you know, young people today that are doing too much. Seeking death through sexual disease or uh, uh, possible, you know, uh, well, we don't got to go there. Um, 
Let's continue. The death instinct may seem like a strange concept to most people, and Freud himself was initially resistant to the idea. Although he found it counterintuitive concept at first, Freud found that the death drive accurately describes the motivation behind certain risk-taking and harmful behaviors directed inward toward oneself or outward towards others. Think about this. We have a death instinct that goes inward. We've discussed different versions of that. But what about the death instinct that goes outward toward others? What does that remind you of? The eat the rich propaganda. Death instinct going outward to others. Who are the others? The rich, the wealthy, the oppressor, the elite. They are literally, through these films... Through these narratives, my theory and my view, okay, I could be wrong, okay, I'm just throwing these ideas out, out here. They are literally conjuring this death instinct for us to outwardly project. It's how you create armies, man. Culture of death. Yes, Ellie. Yes. There we go, Christopher. Good one. I love this. George Floyd video was broadcast globally. People watch it over and over. Horror show, unprecedented. I wouldn't say unprecedented because I think that started first. A good example first was uh, Rodney King beating, which we talked about quite a bit last show. So I don't go there. But yes, you're right. That was just a follow up. Absolutely. Or we could add to that the images of the uh, OJ Simpson case, the bloody images that were just paraded around all media for a very long time literally just pumped in our face look at this bloody woman on the ground look at her look at her look at her yeah man death instinct now again i i believe freud is completely wrong here with this drive like this is a biological thing no 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 this is a spiritual thing in my view like watching a snuff film zoe there we go that's that's the darkest and deepest end of it all but you're right because figuratively it's true Faces of death, Cypher, man, old school. Yeah, you, you got to be a little older if you know about that. And Eros, so there's Thanatos and Eros. Okay, so Thanatos is the death drive. Eros is this like libido or sexual drive. Uh, but Eros, sexual drive, lib libidinal drive. I, and I think these things are spiritually very real. I think they're aspects of the flesh. I think there is a spiritual death instinct, flesh-based death instinct. I think suicide comes out of that death instinct. And I think the eros uh, is also the, the sexual, the libidinal, the libidinal drive. I think hypersexuality is a uh, promiscuity, hyperpromiscuity. These these are these are uh, pathological examples of of this this eros or sex drive. It's just crazy. This is I'm showing you this. It's called Children of the COVID. And it's like a take on Children of the Corn, which is a super demonic, satanic movie. It just shows you what I think is a perfect example of this death instinct that was literally being projected through screens and media out to parents. It's so crazy. Check this out. Here's for COVID's youngest victim. We're talking about how horrible, how much of a risk it is to children. <laughs> This virus is capable of killing children. It has already killed hundreds of children. It's getting our kids. The more cases you have, the more deaths among children. Tragic deaths. Coming for our children. Kids are getting infected. Kids are getting infected. They're still getting infected. Literally hundreds of children were infected. Kids are in danger. They are vehicles of spread. Children spread the virus. It may be that children who get infected have long-term consequences. Parents of children of all ages should assume that even the smallest symptom could be COVID. Young children are being affected. This virus takes its toll on our children. This is killing children. Children have died. Children have died. Children could die every day. It's killing children. Killing children. COVID-19 is disproportionately killing children of color. Children die of COVID. This is killing kids right now. It's taking children's lives. Really hitting it. Children. Yeah, morbidity. It is picking off young people like we've never seen. Deaths from COVID are incredibly rare among children. A death rate of zero. Point zero, 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 zero. It doesn't matter how low the risk. Risk to children. The danger for children and the need for them to be vaccinated. Get away from me! Oh! 
The only chance these children have is masking and a vaccine. Millions of parents across the United States desperate to get their children under 12 vaccinated. Unvaccinated kids are at risk. Children are at high risk. The unvaccinated are putting kids at risk. The unvaccinated are a risk to young children. I need to be now careful for my children because of all the unvaccinated people around us. If you are not vaccinated, do not go around children. America shouldn't be sending unvaccinated kids to school. Growing concern about unvaccinated children. It's like we're playing with the lives of children by not isolating ourselves until things are under control. Don't come out and infect my great grandkid. You lied about your vaccine status and you sneeze on my grandchildren. That could be a crime. I'm more worried for children than I've ever been. Growing crisis for children. The number of kids infected. The coronavirus is reaching alarming levels. Alarming numbers. The alarming surge in the number of children infected with COVID. It's crucial for students 12 and up to get vaccinated. We need these vaccines pretty urgently. It really is a very urgent situation. We need to raise the level of urgency. The sense of urgency. Since we've been vaccinated, how dangerous is it to be near our grandchildren? (laughs) Parents grow increasingly concerned. Deeply concerning. Leaving many parents concerned. Parents concerned. They're still concerned. Reports are deeply concerning. Kids are starting college in three weeks and they're not going to be alive. I apologize for the clips. They're kind of disturbing, honestly. A a little bit overkill. Uh, I get the point, though. He's trying to make him. He's trying to put a message out there but do you hear the anchoring terms the, the language the anchoring language the the constant repetition of certain words this is a term a psychological term called anchoring that literally controls the mind it creates subconsciously ideas and thoughts um totally insane we don't have to continue it because it's a bit much uh but yeah just a perfect example of fear the death 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 or the the potential of death, right? But of course, always, always going for the children, every time. That's why we have to be strong, guys, and we have to get ready because more of this stuff is coming. They're going to pull another one of these things, man. Matter of time. Thankfully, a lot more people are awake. NLP, NLP is another one, not for to you, yes. Um, luckily a lot of people are waking up. There's a whole new movement, especially, uh, moms and just parents in general that are really against this stuff. And there is a whole new terrain theory, um, organized kind of movement coming out. People are really doing research and, uh, goodbye germ theory is, is my source that I like for, for understanding, uh, the misconception of germ theory and the, uh, truth of, uh, terrain theory. Anyhow, what else? Thanatos, right? What do you think about just by the term Thanatos, death instinct? Well, of course, Thanos, Marvel Universe slash Metaverse, Thanos. Thanos is probably one of the most popular characters over the last several years. Uh, uh, Coincidence, possibly. Interesting, no doubt. Thanatos, Death Wish. I also think of a Bronson films that were uh, the series, the Bronson series. Uh, Death Wish, right? Subliminal linguistic association, right? All of these things symbolically, and I would argue spiritually and psychologically, anchor the anchor ideas, thoughts, emotions, spirits into the uh, subconscious. It's, it's not. It's not just death in a physical or biological sense, but death of everything, death of relationship, death of absolute morality, uh, death of faith in a general sense, death of tradition, death of relationship, uh, death of truth, nihilism, epistemic, this universal death, so when, I, when I'm bringing up this concept of the death instinct, it's not just what we've discussed throughout the show regarding, you know, the death of man or people or f- the flesh, but the death of life in 
many of its representations. Life represents itself more than material flesh and blood. It represents itself spiritually. It represents itself socially. It represents itself politically. Death of attention. Death of the ability to be present. Death of the ability to be honest. Death of love. Prawn. Lonely fans. Death of the identity. Instagram. TikTok. Death of health. Generalized chronic illness. Generalized metabolic disease disease by way of diet lowering the general baseline for health morbid cinema and mystifying healthy behaviors by emphasizing psychopathy sociopathy and abject hedonism murder narcissism hypersexuality redefining the quality of life and separating humans from their humanity technologically ai culturally horror films horror series I, uh, um sexually you know a prawn for instance attentionally tiktok excessive video game playing I'm not saying playing video games is bad but excessive video game playing abject hedonism in lieu of community self identity love meaning purpose all there is is pleasure abject abject hedonism all there is is self all there is is an endless eternal search for self and identity when nothing else external real purposive material virtuous transcendental exists all that's left is entertainment pleasure physically emotionally figuring out what to do with yourself death of respect Chanel be yeah it's another one mm -hmm. that would fit in the tra death of tradition yes absolutely narcissistic identity 2.0 oh bari i like it pray without ceasing dank dank bud yes no better time than now. Redefining quality of life. Redefining quality of health. Redefining everything, whether it's what a woman is, you know, what a jab is, you know, what inflation is. Lowering sociocultural expectations of health, life, and existence. Think about the depth of this happening on a universal international scale through screens. Normalizing death, normalizing illness, normalizing sadness. We're going to get to some examples of all of this. The death wish, Thanatos, cultural, political, biological, scientific, technological, spiritual, Thanatos. But they want to save the earth. Whilst throwing life, humanity, and all things that are good and whole and true and pure to the wolves. All under the guise of altruism. Interesting, isn't it? 